In the previous lesson, we had looked at how we can make our navigation bar responsive. So when we resize it, we get this icon here that indicates that there's a menu which is clickable, it opens up and it closes. So we can resize and we see that we do still have some issues with doing it this way. And the issues really come because we're able to resize the page. So this typically wouldn't happen if you came in on a mobile device, you came into the website and things would actually work as needed because you wouldn't actually be resizing your page. So this type of menu bar is also ideal if you're hiding and showing a menu bar or if you've got a second menu bar that you want to hide and show. So in this lesson, I want to take this one step further and show you some other options to create menu bars. And in this lesson, instead of adding and removing the actual, the style property, the display property, we're gonna use, we're gonna actually use a class and we're gonna remove and add the class as needed. And that class is gonna be the holder for whether the menu bar gets displayed or none. And what this is going to do is this is going to simplify things a little bit by taking it out and breaking apart that ability that we're displaying this menu bar and we have the ability actually to hide and show this but then we're going to allow it to be controlled via the styling. So we're going to attach a brand new class here and then this class is actually going to be controlled via the media screen and let us know whether we need to hide or show this and this is all going to be controlled within here within the media screen so instead of adding it here into the nav bar we're going to be adding it as a class and this is going to make a lot more sense because once this class has a larger size then we know that we do want to show it so i'm going to create a brand new class here and we're just going to call it sm screen so this will be for small screens and we know that whatever items here within our website that need to have the same properties for small screens they're going to be able to take that same property and over here within the css we need to add that in that we're going to essentially we're going to do a display none on that and then we're going to toggle it within the media screen here so i'm just going to open up our CSS file which is down here below and I'm going to attach some properties to SM screen and what's going to happen is whenever we are on the smaller screen then we're going to just display none which means that on the larger screen we're always going to display and so this is going only for the navigation bar so it's got actually not going to have anything to do with what's happening within our within our main display area from our desktop view. Try this out and see how this works out. So when I refresh it, we see that we're automatically, we're not displaying that menu bar, but when we go big, then we are displaying it. And then this icon is still clickable right now. And we're gonna take care of that within this lesson as well. We're gonna take care of that JavaScript. And what we wanna do within the JavaScript is essentially toggle that class on and off because that class is the one that actually is gonna show the menu bar or hide the menu bar. So let's go over to our JavaScript here and we're gonna create some variables that are gonna hold the, the contents. That is document objects, so document. And we're gonna get element by ID. So we're gonna grab that entire nav bar So grab navbar because that's where what we've called that uh, whole navigation bar here over here. So we're going to grab everything here and we're going to also check to see if our button. So this button here is called mini menu. So let's take a look at this one as well because we want to maybe apply some properties to that. Uh, so maybe we're going to attach the on click to that. So this is going to be the same thing here as maybe we can call it button menu and we'll equal it to this and we'll clean this up a little bit as well by doing this. 
So we're going to essentially add that on click function. So just making a quick adjustment to here. And what I want to do now is I want to actually, instead of all of this, what I want to do is I want to take this uh, nav bar again. So we're just essentially doing the same thing here. So this is uh, this object X is holding document get element by ID nav bar, or we could maybe call it nav bar so it makes a little bit more sense there. So nav bar contains all of that information, and we're going to essentially check that class name. And class name is the object that contains all of the class information of the element. And we're going to check to see if this navbar class name is equal to, absolutely equal to nothing. And if it's blank, then we know that, so if it's just a space there, so I've got to make sure I add that space in as well, so that when we're removing it and hiding it, that we actually are adding in a space. So we do have that space there. Uh, so now we need to make sure that we add the proper the proper class. So it's going to be adding in SM screen and removing SM screen. So if it's not there, then the value of navbar class name is SM screen, and if it's blank, then it's just going to be uh, the blank space. And I can also do a console log so we can get a better idea of what's contained within this object. And you can see that the class name is going to be presented within the console. And the console directory uh, is a better way to display object information, especially when you're getting object information from the DOM. So you're going to see that sometimes when we're developing, we use console logs, console directory, and essentially they, apply, they send over messages over into the console. And this is used for development to pass information back and forth. So you wouldn't actually know what the contents of navbar is but if you console log it out then every time you go to the website you're going to be able to see what's contained within this object. So let's check this out and see how this is working now. So we're refreshing and I'm actually going to open up the console so we can see some, some additional information so that's under inspect here and so I'm going to have that console over here so we can see uh, what messages we're getting back and forth and when we resize it so now we get the navigation bar when I click it we see we're opening up the nav bar and we see the contents of it so it's a blank class so we see when we're clicking it again it's a blank class but there's still something that's going wrong here and just looking at this I also want to note that how console directory and console log output the information differently. So the console log just outputs that entire element, including the HTML, and then console directory allows us to actually see the directory information. And this is the one that we're looking for right here. So we're looking for class name. So this is the property that we're looking at, and we're checking to see what the value is. So we can see whenever we click it, so I just need to open that again and see within the console. So this is that last object that we just clicked. And when we go to class name, so it's not actually adding it in. So this is what's causing that issue because it's not adding in the SM screen. So looking at our source code, so we can see that we can also log out that class name so we can double check what the value is that's being presented there. But going down here, we see that we do have still some issues with the CSS because the way it is right now, taking some unwanted properties and we don't want to display it none because we're controlling the display through the class now, the SM class, and that's the one that's going to display none. So we want to get rid of that and I'm just doing a quick check over to make sure that everything else is looks proper. So let's go back out to our web page and refresh it. And remember we've updated the console as well now so we should be able to see what the actual the class name is. So this is just going to be a listing of all the classes that are there. So in case you have some additional classes, then you need to add those in. So it's actually not taking that condition and it's not uh, resetting it there. So maybe we do need to just leave it at blank. 
So this might be a little bit easier if we have some additional classes there because then we know that the properties are going to be in place, which I'm going to show you as well. So when we refresh it, we see that now everything looks like it's working properly. When I resize the page, our menu is there and it looks like the resizing is working. So even though the menu is open and we resize it, it doesn't take anything away from the actual navigation bar showing up. And when we resize it again back down to small, then we still are at where we left off with the navigation bar being open. So these are just two different ways to present it and you've got to choose whichever one works best for you and I'm just going to quickly show you how it is if we have another class in here, if uh, by chance you have a second class or something like that, uh, so maybe we'll just call it second or something like that. Uh, so then we need to update this as well and this should read that if it's second then we're going to update it with, uh, with the second class and uh, we just leave that one in. So we're going to add that one to it. Let's just put a space in there. So maybe we don't need a space. So let's try this out and refresh it. So now when I click it, it's toggling and we can take a quick look because we still have that developer console open and we can see that whenever we're clicking it so we're adding and removing the class but we're actually removing both classes so another problem there that we just need to make a quick update of it so we're actually rewriting all of the classes in there and when we're just writing second so we're, not, we're actually losing that uh, screen so we need to actually write them both in if we want to keep them within that click so we want to write both of them in there because it's taking that whole class name so it's applying multiple classes there so even though it looks like it's working, now we see that in fact it is working and it's keeping that second class. So if you have multiple classes in there, make sure that you're listing them out and that you're rewriting them back into that particular element within the class name.